Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my lovelies. I, If you follow me on TikTok or any of my social medias, then you know, you see my makeup. Um, and I wanted to show you guys uh, because it's Hallow's Eve. Why not? But I definitely encourage you guys to follow me on social medias. I was doing a quick... Uh, idea for those of you guys that don't want to spend necessarily money for costumes or anything like that. There's tons of, of different types of uh, characters that you can do only wearing makeup. So anyways, uh, definitely follow me on social media. So if you guys are interested in personal reading, spell work, or anything like that, go ahead and click the description box below. You'll be able to find our Shopify as well as any of the ingredients that you guys see on the videos for spell work, you can find all of that on my storefront with Amazon. So moving on, we are going to be experiencing an eclipse again. Yes, this 28th of October. How is this going to affect your sign? We're going to find out. We're going to see what exactly you can expect this coming eclipse and how it's going to affect you. We are experiencing it in Taurus, the sign of Taurus. So wherever you have Taurus in your placements, whatever house it's in, that's what's going to be transforming. All right, let's get into it. We are beginning here with Scorpio. Obviously, we just begun Scorpio season. So let's see what you guys can expect for the remainder of the month, actually for the next coming six months, uh, because that's how much or how long uh, eclipses uh, affect us. Actually, it can affect from six months all the way to two years. I believe this eclipse is going to be two years. So anyways, definitely comment below. Let me know if you guys are dressing up for Hollow's Eve. And if you guys do celebrate, how do you celebrate? I'm interested in knowing. As you guys know, we go pretty big over here on this side. So anyways, let's get into it. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, what are the messages for all of the zodiac signs? We're going to begin here with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, what they can expect for the next coming six months. What is this eclipse bringing to them? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what they can expect for the next coming six, I want to say two years, actually. Um, let's see what Scorpios can expect for this coming with this coming eclipse. All right, let's kick it off. Here we go. We have the six of swords, six of swords, Scorpio. You're definitely moving on from situations that are no longer working for you. I feel for a lot of you guys, you guys have been going through a lot of transformational type of energy the past year and a half. Um, as we experienced last year, uh, an eclipse, one of the lunar eclipse, I believe was in your sign. So again, you could be experiencing a lot of transformational uh, energy right now. Six of Swords does indicate to me that you are moving on. You're no longer holding back or no longer on the path or on the energy of facilitating or making it easy for other people. I feel like you are learning to say no, learning to have boundaries as well as uh, you're, push you're, you're pushing forward. Uh, that is definitely... What I'm hearing is for a lot of you guys, you're pushing forward, even if it means uh, walking out or being okay with connections, attachments um, that are going to break way around this time. Um, so for a lot of you guys, this could be friends, this could be relatives, this could be um, people that you're very close with that perhaps are not the best for your interest, um, perhaps hold you back. Um, but there is definitely a lot of transformation that is happening and you're moving on from, I'm, what I'm also hearing for you Scorpios is you're going to be getting a lot of people telling you that you've changed. Don't take that in a negative way, even if they mean it in a negative way. Don't take it personal Scorpio, you are changing and it's okay. And it's okay for people to not be okay with that, but that's their problem, not yours. Your next card here is the Page of Cups. So the Page of Cups does indicate to me more romance or perhaps for some of you guys tapping more into your romantic side. Uh, the next coming months, you may be experiencing a bit of being able to open up more 
easily to your loved ones or people that you are currently in a relationship with or people that you are connecting. If you are single, uh, that's definitely going to be changing as I do see your romantic side actually expanding. So if there has been lack of romance, that's not going to be the situation anymore. And finally, your next card here is the four of wands. So four of wands does indicate being able to get to a point of stabilizing something. For some of you guys with the six of swords, you may be contemplating moving. For others of you, you may be changing residency or the place where you live. I feel this is expansion energy. Keep in mind, you guys, we are experiencing the eclipse in Taurus and Jupiter. So Jupiter is all about expansion, you guys. It's all about, you know, think big, um, go big or go home type of energy. So I feel like if you guys have been going through a transition where you're hesitating or maybe even thinking about moving or making a major change like that, a life-changing type of moment, this is the time where you take that jump, where you take that plunge, uh, positive, positive energy here. All right, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. What can Sagittarius expect for the next coming months? What is this lunar eclipse uh, bringing to Sagittarius? What is this eclipse bringing to Sagittarius? Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. I know a lot of you guys have been going through a lot of transformation. I want to say the past two years, um, Sagis. So let's see what you can expect. What is this? What is this eclipse bringing to Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Okay, here we go. All right, your first card, Sagittarius, you have the Three of Cups. Three of Cups does indicate celebratory type of energy for some of you guys. I see you guys putting down something, putting down something in regards to something that is bad for you. So for some of you guys, it could be uh, perhaps maybe quitting smoking, uh, drinking or bringing more you're making your health a priority. And I feel like this is going to be continuously happening for you guys. Um, for some of you guys, it could be that you may be experiencing a bit of health issues, but I feel that that's going to be quickly resolved. It's not something negative. It's a positive thing. Every time that happens, it's usually, especially around eclipse season, it usually indicates it's best for us to take care of what we need to take care of before things get worse. So Again, I feel like you guys are making some type of changes that are happening in regards to your lifestyle or in regards to um, your everyday type of routine. So again, could be that you're picking up on, you know, wanting to be more proactive in your physical health or taking better care of yourself, changing your diet, anything like that. Um, but I do see for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that take medication, perhaps you find something that is more on the... Um, natural way, uh, natural way is what I'm hearing. So for some of you guys, it could be that, uh, you start to take like more natural remedies and slowly, but surely get off medication. So that's definitely a positive thing. Your next card here, Sagittarius is the two of wands. So this is talking to me about major expansion. This is about thinking of the future for some of you guys, even if you guys in the past, not necessarily thought about the future or like very, thinking very, you know, forward. Um, I definitely see you guys taking this more seriously in regards to making plans for the future and taking actions right now that are going to consequently affect whether it's a positive or negative is really up to you, Sagittarius, but um, it's going to affect your near future. Uh, for some of you guys, there is trips, uh, there is uh, taking a trip or taking some type of road trip uh, keep in mind, you know, Jupiter is going to definitely be amplifying this eclipse that we're going to be experiencing. And that is your ruling planet. So what does that mean? Major changes that are coming your way that are going to help you for the future and to expand your horizons, Sagittarius. Your next card here is the Six of Cups. So the Six of Cups does indicate for some of you guys, the travel may be connected to family, may be connected to your roots, may be connected to perhaps your childhood home or childhood town. Um, I see a lot of reconnecting from people from the past, even friends that perhaps you kind of went separate ways. I feel like they're coming back around in a positive way. Um, it's about expansion right now, Sagittarius. It's about, you know, have the courage to think big 
Um, and I know I don't need to tell you guys because you guys are definitely very courageous, but with the six of cups here, I do feel like you're going to be, you're going to feel more harmonized. You're going to feel more loved, even in points where perhaps you felt like you were a bit judged. Uh, that's quickly going to be dissipating and you're going to definitely feel the love of those around you or the people that really care for you. So again, um, travel is something that they are highlighting uh, strongly for some of you guys. All right, moving on. Let's see what Capricorn, let's see what Capricorn can expect for this eclipse. I hope I am not freaking you guys out with this makeup. And if I am, I'm definitely doing my job. <laughs> right? All right, Capricorn, let's see what's going on with you. Let's see what you can expect for this eclipse that's coming. What can you expect? What changes are coming to Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Capricorn. Your first card here is the Knight of Swords. So there is communication that's opening up for some of you guys. Uh, perhaps communication hasn't been that great. Um, perhaps you've been having difficulty with uh, anything that has to do with uh, computers, with um, radio, with, for some of you guys, even um, any form of communication, really. But um, even electronics are having issues with electronics. <laughs> That's quickly going to be dissipating. Communication will definitely open up. If you've been hoping or wanting to hear from someone, you will be definitely hearing from them uh, sometime by the end of November. Um, I feel that someone is definitely coming back around Capricorn and it almost feels like um, unexpected. Perhaps you had given up on someone um, romantically. Perhaps uh, you kind of disconnected or emotionally disconnected from them. I feel like they're coming back around. I feel like for some of them, uh, they kind of had a little bit of, a lot of issues actually, not a little bit, a lot of issues in their life. Um, I feel like they're more settled now. So they're able to give you or provide to you more attention or perhaps um, learning to put you or make you a priority. But I do definitely feel like you may be a bit guarded about this communication or this connection that's coming through. Your next card here is the Page of Pentacles, Capricorn. I see you guys journeying or taking on some type of journey, some new endeavor, some type of business. Um, if you guys have been working or thinking about starting your own business, I definitely see that unfolding sometime between the middle of December, beginning of January. For others of you uh, with the Page of Pentacles, I do feel like you've been on a journey or some type of um, endeavor in regards to making your financial situation much better or much more stable. Um, what I'm hearing is for some of you guys, there are opportunities that are going to be coming to you that are unexpected, um, perhaps where you don't necessarily would see some type of convenience in that. So as an example, if a friend comes to you and tells you, hey, Capricorn, um, you know, I'm really having issues uh, with my business. I don't have a lot of people. You think you can help me? um, you know, work the weekends or something like that. And you may see it as more of an inconvenience, like you kind of feel forced because it's a friend or a loved one. Um, but I actually feel like this is greatly going to help you because you may actually find that you enjoy doing that, or it gives you inspiration to actually branch out. And I feel like right now it's about branching out for you Capricorns. Um, try the best you can not to be so analytical Capricorn. If you see opportunities, even a very slight potential, um, if you're going to do it, do it, you know, don't hesitate about it. Um, the same thing with your spending Capricorn. If you are spending, as an example, if you go to the store and you decide to buy yourself a shirt and then when you get home, you're kind of regretting it, um, don't do that because all you're doing is you're kind of putting resistance in the money flow. And you got to keep in mind, money is energy. You got to let it flow organically. So whatever purchases, make sure that it's something you really want. And if you really want, just know you deserve it. Don't be such a, such a stingy ass Capricorn. <laughs> Your next card here is the seven of swords. Okay. So there is definitely something that is going to be revealed to you Capricorn for the remainder of the month of November. I want to say for some of you guys, this is second week of December. 
there is something that's coming out in the open, something that has to do for some of you guys, it could be um, a lie, perhaps that your partner's been keeping from you, or perhaps they kind of dressed up that lie. They didn't necessarily tell you the truth, but they didn't necessarily lie to you. Um, but withholding information to me is still considered lying or deceiving. Um, but I definitely do feel like there is some truths that are going to be coming out in this month for you and in the month of November. So don't be surprised. And here's the thing, you guys, when it comes to deception, when it comes to lies, it's kind of like, I'd rather know, even if it's hurtful or even if it's painful, I'd rather know where I stand than to not know and find out through hardship and difficulty. So take it as a blessing. I feel like whatever's being hidden from you or has been purposely hidden from you is coming out to the open for the greater good. You're making decisions. For some of you guys, you'll be cutting out this person that is caught lying or deceiving you um, and rightfully so. So moving on. Let's see what's going on here with Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, what they can expect for the next, what can they expect for this coming eclipse? What changes are coming to Aquarius? What changes are coming to Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? If you guys like these videos, like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you guys are interested in any personal readings or spell work, Look at the description link below. You'll be able to find all our contact, our socials. Everything is on there. All right, Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Oh, here we go. Aquarius, you have the King of Wands. So you guys are going into this energy. You're going into this new cycle where you're feeling more empowered. You're feeling confident. You're feeling yourself. Um, for some of you guys, your passion is really going to be heightened uh, for the remainder of the year. I see you guys more assertive and aggressive in your pursuits for goals or aspirations. I see you guys achieving. You guys are definitely determined and focused. If you're not feeling that energy right now, you're definitely going to be feeling that going into the middle of November all the way to December. I see you guys much more assertive. And again, your confidence is definitely going to be booming for the remainder of the year or actually the beginning of next year. Your next card here, Aquarius, is the Nine of Cups. Wish fulfillment. There are wishes that are coming true. For some of you guys, there is a manifestation that's coming through. Something where you've been working very hard towards um, and you're definitely accomplishing it or you will see yourself achieve it. Uh, especially this could be in connection with your finances, with career, um, some type of goal, something that you set out to do. You're definitely going to be seeing the materialization of that. If you guys are not experiencing that, I would highly encourage you guys to put your manifestations out to start manifesting because you are definitely promised um, a lot of quick results with that. And finally, your next card here is the devil card. So devil could represent, um, for some of you guys, what I'm seeing is uh, Capricorn or Saturn ruled, it could be another Aquarius that's coming into your life. For some of you guys, you're going to be connecting very deeply or on a deeper level with someone that is a Capricorn sun, moon, or rising. Um, what I'm seeing is for some of you guys, there's almost this aha moment that's going to be happening where you're realizing that the person that is for you or that was meant for you is right in front of you. So this is for those of you guys that are single or have been single for quite a while. I feel like there is someone in your surroundings that um, you perhaps only seen them as friends or perhaps even distancing is involved, but I am seeing that there is definitely a connection and I feel like it's more higher level type of connection. Um, yeah, because I'm getting Saturn ruled here. Um, so again, Capricorn or an Aquarius like yourself, um, but it's almost like the realization of something. So there is some type of some type of realization that's going to be happening for a lot of you guys or the person that is around you. Could be a friend, could be someone that is around you or in your circle or in your social circle, I should say, um, that is definitely making way. For those of you guys that are single, there is definitely a Capricorn coming into your life. All right, moving on. 
let's see what's going on with Pisces. What can Pisces expect with this eclipse that is coming on the 28th? What is this eclipse bringing to Pisces? Sun, moon, rising, Venus. Sun, moon, rising, Venus. What are you guys doing for Hallow's Eve? Do you guys celebrate it? Are you guys turning up? <laughs> All right, let's see what's going on with Pisces. Pisces, your first card. Oof, seven of swords. Okay, so I feel like you guys are going to be having some type of revelation, but it has more to do with revelations about yourself, Pisces, than other people around you. So you've been deceiving or lying to yourself about something, and I feel like this coming eclipse is going to highlight that. It's going to make you realize exactly what it is that you want. It's going to make you kind of have to face the music or take a deeper look at yourself in the mirror and realize whatever situation you've been deceiving yourself about has come to some type of conclusion. I'm hearing delusion also for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that have been dealing with a situation where you're putting your all and your effort and everything into something because you want to feel like it was worth it in the end. I feel like that's the revelation that's going to be happening for a lot of you guys. You're realizing it's not worth it anymore, or it's not worth all the effort or all the sacrifice. I feel like you guys are having an aha, a major aha moment where you're kind of I don't want to say giving up necessarily, because if you've been putting a lot of effort in something, it's not really giving up. Um, you're just seeing no returns. And at this point, you're like, it's time to move on. Your next card here. Yeah. So again, I'm getting delusions. Um, Seven of Cups is fantasy, la la land. It's you, I'm no longer being hopeful. I'm no longer being deceived for some of you guys. Um Perhaps you've made excuses for people you love, uh, for their behavior, for, you know, their lack of consideration, whatever situation it is. I feel like you guys are realizing this month uh, with this eclipse that's coming, you're realizing where you're no longer reciprocated or where people are no longer reciprocating your effort or energy. And you're definitely walking away from this. Uh, especially those of you guys that have been dealing with a toxic relationship or cheating involved. I feel like you're no longer like the rosy glasses are coming off and you're seeing things for what they really are. Um, this is major for a lot of you guys, because especially those of you guys that have been in a long-term committed relationship and it's been rocky and it's just been difficult. And at this point, you don't know what to do. I feel like this eclipse is going to show you the way it's going to show you the signs that you've been hoping for or the signs that you've been praying for. Um, and yeah, it has a lot to do with the reciprocation. It has a lot to do. I'm going to be honest, Pisces. I feel like all of this astrologically, I feel like the heavens are preparing uh, for you to go into the higher version of yourself. So what I mean by that is I feel like for the coming year, meaning next year, you're going to learn to put yourself first. You're going to, I don't want to say selfish, but like you're learning to be selfish or you will be learning how to be selfish and how to be putting yourself first. Um, and now if you're on the other side of the spectrum and you're the type that doesn't necessarily think of others. Uh, yes, Pisces can have that shadow side. Um, I feel like you're having a revelation about people are not no longer welcoming or people are no longer like loving or accepting anymore because they're tired of your shit. So there is an ending cycle of something where you know at this point where the effort needs to go. So if people are not putting effort in talking to you and checking up on you on making sure that you're good, it's people that are no longer good for you and you're walking away. People that come to you only to tell you negative things is people that are taking from you instead of adding to you. And I feel like you're coming to that alignment of knowing your worth, knowing what you deserve. Not only that, but 
I feel like there's major momentum here because there's an upswing that's happening. So for a lot of you Pisces, you're going to be, I'm going to be honest, you're going to be losing friendships, even relationships or partners. But I feel like this is a good thing because think of it as you're shedding, think of it as you're purging and you're aligning yourself to higher dealing with higher elevated people, dealing with better opportunities, dealing with more money. For those of you guys that have been, you know, struggling a bit, that's definitely not going to be the case for you guys coming next year. But again, it has a lot to know, it has a lot to do, sorry, with knowing your worth and speaking up when you deserve that raise. Don't be shy about it. Know your worth and demand that type of reciprocation. All right. All right, Pisces. Now let's go to Aries. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What can they expect for this coming eclipse? Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. By the way, you guys, I am not dressing up as the Joker for Halloween. Um, but I have been doing, if you follow me on TikTok, on Instagram, obviously, you know, been giving you guys ideas of what you guys can do for uh hollows eve uh for costumes if you don't necessarily want to spend money on outfits etc all right let's see what's going on with aries aries sun moon raising venus what can they expect for this eclipse what changes are coming to them all right aries you have the five of wands so the five of wands is indicating to me you're getting more perspectives or you're getting more suitors in regards to love and romance. If you feel like your love life has been a little bit stale, uh, that's definitely going to quickly be changing. And I, I see the change happening, actually. Uh, the second to third week of November, I feel like you're going to be finding out about people that are interested in you or people that are trying to talk to you, especially those of you guys that have or are in a re relationship or recently got into a relationship, do not be surprised if you find out that people are trying to get your attention. It has something to do with the fact that they know you're taken now. Um, so you may feel like, where the hell were these people when I was single? Um, because there's an overflow of people trying to get or fight for your attention. Your next card here is the five of pentacles. So you have two fives. There are a bit of struggles that are going on with you, Aries, or that you're going to be experiencing, but I feel like it has more to do with um, your finances, where the challenges are coming from. Five of Pentacles does indicate to me uh, having to go through a go through some type of phase of experiencing a bit of difficulty, but I feel like it has more to do because you're quickly coming to the realization that there are things in life that have more value than work and money. So what I mean by that is a two five speaks to me about an inner struggle that you're going to be experiencing. And I feel like because of the wands and the pentacles, it has more to do with the finances, but also with the restriction that comes with working a lot. So as an example, it could be a situation where you've been very adamant about making or finding or getting to a point in your life where you are financially stable, but it's coming or you're realizing that it's coming at the cost or expense of not spending time with your family, of not being around, not being there for the birth of your child. There are things that are coming into into your energy where you're being forced to see that there's more to work or that there's more to money, special moments in life that we no longer get back. Like, you know, uh, having to go or have made plans to go on a trip and all of a sudden your work needs you, you can't make it, you can't be there or you think you have other priorities and then you realize that, you know, you missed out on your child's first steps or you missed out on the graduation of your child or you missed out on, it's almost like a, a acknowledging that there are more things that more than anything, what I'm hearing is for a lot of you guys, you're going to realize that time is more valuable than money. 
So this can mean a whole sphere of things. It can go from realizing that you're missing out on a lot of things because you're constantly working or constantly making money, or you're realizing that you can't get time back. You're realizing you're getting older. You're realizing that, you know, you've been working all your life and haven't really experienced life or have been really enjoyed or given yourself the opportunity to enjoy. So there is a transition that's happening there where you are coming to terms with realizing that there's more worth in the moments than thinking about the future. I hope that makes sense. And your next card is the Hierophant. Exactly what I just said. I feel like you guys are shedding old beliefs or old habits or old behaviors because there is a realization that's coming. There is an elevation of being able to see life through different perspective, through a much deeper pers perspective. Or for some of you guys realizing that we're not going to be here forever. Um, and I know that everyone knows that, but sometimes we kind of forget. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in the moment or we get so wrapped up in our constant struggles of everyday life that we worry and drive ourselves insane with responsibility and with issues and problems that we don't take time to breathe and to realize all of it is temporary. It is all temporary. And the only thing we can never get back is time. I hope that makes sense. All right, Aries. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Taurus, what changes are coming to you with this eclipse? Taurus, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Taurus, sun, moon, rising. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. <clears throat> All right, Taurus, sun, moon, rising, Venus. What can you expect with this coming eclipse? <laughs> okay so i haven't pulled out cards but i'm already getting messages <clears throat> obviously the coughing i'm going to be honest and the reason why i'm laughing taurus is because i don't necessarily see you guys as the type uh to hesitate about speaking up i know you guys have no issue and no problem with that but i'm going to be honest the people that you love you have a tendency of like sugar coating things you know because you care for them and you don't want to hurt their feelings. But I'm hearing that you're going into this energy more aggressive in your approach of how you speak and how you express yourself. I see you guys being more cutthroat. You're giving me energy of Capricorn energy, um, kind of the, the, the type to give you advice that is anyone else would hear a Capricorn give advice and be like, that was cold. But I feel like in the end, it gives you results. It gives you that shake that you need. It gives you that, oh shit, I didn't need to hear that type of energy. And I feel that you guys are taking on that energy. For some of you guys, it's out of survival, meaning people have taken advantage of you long enough or people have taken you for granted long enough and you're no longer dealing with that or you're no longer gonna be putting up with that. For others of you, I see you guys speaking up in the workplace or in anything that's connected to your finances, for some of you guys, you are expressing. So you may find yourself having the thought or the desire to uh, perhaps express yourself in some type of way, creating a blog, creating, um, uh, you know, a Instagram page that is about poetry or that is about the struggles of being a single mom or the struggles of being a single father. For others of you guys, it could be writing a book or the idea of writing a book. The point is expressing your feelings or emotions or experiences. And I see you guys really honing into that energy. Keep in mind the eclipse is in your sign. So, and also Jupiter there um, is definitely going to give you a more expanded version of yourself. So whatever's been holding you back, you're breaking through with that and you are elevating yourself because you're being forced to do so. So yes, yeah, sometimes it's nice to be comfortable, but um, you're going to be busy. I'm hearing there is a lot, things are going to start to pick up for you. And I feel like you are being put or you're being connected with people that are going to help you get to where you want to get or do what you want to do. So again, I see you guys, for a lot of you guys, I'm seeing career changes for some of you. Um, so this could be, you've been in the medical field for the past 
10 years, for example, and all of a sudden you decide, hey, I want to write a book um, or you decide, you know, I've been I've always wanted to help people out as an example, help women and be a spokesperson for women um, or for, you know, battered women or you know, anything that has to do with like wanting to help, wanting to give your voice out. And I feel like, again, for a lot of you guys, there's a lot of career shifts or changes that are going to be happening. All right. So moving on here, we have the five of cups and the five of cups is giving me almost like, um, I am no longer looking at the past. I am no longer reminiscing about the past. I am no longer the victim of the past. I feel like this is give this is the five of the cups, but it's giving me the energy, heavy energy of the death card with the five of cups. So again, uh, for some of you guys, there is a major transition that's happening, a major shift, a major change, um, letting go of the past and being able to finally detach yourself from the past or being able to shed uh, or purge things that are no longer uh, necessary for you that are keeping you actually from growth. Your next card is exactly what I just said. Six of swords moving on. Uh, you're letting go of the past. You are almost like a reborn type of energy. There's a rebirth that's happening for a lot of you Taurus out there. Uh, for some of you guys, there could be some type of travel involved in the month of January or February. Um, for others of you, travel is going to be something that is going to take center stage for you guys for 2024. There's almost this desire to want to grow, to want to expand, to get more knowledge, to be around different cultures or different people, different walks of life, to take in really, I'm getting almost like a, a new hunger for life, a new zest for life is what you guys are going to be experiencing and your next card here is the three of swords. So again, I feel that for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that have been holding on to a relationship that's no longer working for you, this is the end of it. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, there is a conclusion, a culmination that is going to be happening. You're no longer going to put your hands in anyone else's, not your hands, sorry, put your happiness in anyone else's hands. I feel like you guys are taking self-responsibility. Um, even those relationships that you've been very, very working very hard towards fixing or stabilizing, I feel like you're coming to the realization that you're better off, Taurus. There's a lot of transition and a lot of changes that are happening, but I see major transformation, major expansion for a lot of you guys. Uh, for some of you guys, it is actually the deciding five of cups, six of swords and three of swords, um, giving me the energy three of swords is it's upright, but it's giving me the reverse, uh, energy. So for a lot of you guys, it's finally letting go of the past or finally letting go of your past traumas and being able to, to tell yourself to accept that you are ready to move on, that you are ready to embrace a new beginning and, that you're ready to take on the world. Again, I'm sensing major zest for life, you guys. So uh, if you guys been feeling off or if you've been feeling a bit down or perhaps for some of you guys even feeling um, very low on energy, that's quickly going to be changing uh, in November for a lot of you guys. All right, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What changes are coming for Gemini with this eclipse? Gemini, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Gemini, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Gemini, sun, moon, rising, Venus. All right. We have two cards that popped out, Gemini. You have the Hierophant here, and you also have the full card. So these are two major arcanas. This is indicating that there is a major change that is going to be happening for a lot of you guys. I feel like you guys are going to be experiencing almost a challenging of your old beliefs or your old way of seeing things. There is almost this, you've been stuck on a situation where, you've been stuck on a situation, Gemini, where you didn't want to be looked at or seen as the one that gave up, but I feel like you're quickly going to realize that it's time to move on. So there is a major 
there is a major situation that's going to be happening for a lot of you Geminis where you're kind of being forced to see the person for who they are. So this could be an ex, this could be a person from your past, this could be your current partner. If you're having relationship difficulties, it's almost like their true nature or their true characters coming out to the open. But the reason for this is because the universe is telling you, Gemini, it is time to move on. It is time to stop holding on or putting yourself on the sidelines, waiting for someone um, that is really not... I don't want to say it very harshly, but, uh, you know, with the full card, I feel like someone in this connection definitely took things very seriously where the other one took it very loosely, perhaps because they felt like you were something that was for sure. You were the one that was never going to walk away or you were the one that um, would constantly sacrifice. And at this point, it's the universe showing you this is who they are. This is their true character. This is what they've been keeping from you or what you need to see so that you can finally turn the page Gemini. Your next card here is the 10 of wands. So <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're being challenged right now, Gemini. Um, and the challenge is, are you going to continue to hinder yourself by doing what you promised yourself not to do, perhaps from experience, perhaps from childhood trauma, as an example, if you were raised in a broken home, you promised yourself never uh, to, if you ever had a kid that you would never abandon them. And it came at the cost of you constantly sacrificing yourself and allowing your partner to take advantage of you. Like at what point do you stop and you say, okay, you know what? This is not healthy and I'm hurting my children by being with this person that is, you know, just ungrateful, um, that is toxic, that is, do you see what I'm saying? It's like, there is, there is something that you promised yourself not to do. And I feel because of that belief, it's held you back. Um, and sometimes we're held back, not for the positive, but because we refuse to see things for what they are now. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like the scenario of what I just said. If you were raised in a broken home, you promised yourself never to walk away or leave or abandon your kids. But yet by you putting up with it or dealing with that, it's came at the cost of toxicity. It's came at the cost of being taken advantage or being taken for granted, stuff like that. Um, so there is a realization that's happening. You're realizing like, this is who they are. This is not, you know, I am not my mother. I am not my father, whoever walked away from me. Um, it is my life and it is my destiny. And it's time that I take care of myself because in taking care of myself, I'm able to better care for my children and to give them a better example. Um, so I feel like there is this issue that's happening surrounding family or family dynamics that you're going to be exploring or that you're going to be experiencing uh, with this eclipse. For others of you, especially those of you guys that are single, there are certain things that you've attached yourself to belief systems that you've outgrown belief systems that are keeping you from your happiness. So you're going to be experiencing, or you're going to be constantly being put in situations where you are being kind of, I don't want to say confronted, but you're having to realize this is not the way to go about it, or this is not the way to deal with things. There has to be a new way. I have to create a new belief system because this old one is keeping me from my happiness, it's keeping me from what I deserve, from what I'm worthy. So there's a major shift that's happening. But before that happens, there are certain things that you're going to be questioning or that you're going to be having to analyze and realize that you've outgrown those beliefs. All right, moving on. Let's see what's going on with cancer. What can cancer expect for this coming eclipse? What changes are coming to cancer? Cancer, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Cancer, sun, moon, rising, Venus. 
what is this eclipse bringing to Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Okay, one more shuffle. All right. Here we go. All right, Cancer, we have the Queen of Cups. So the Queen of Cups is being able to nurture being able to nurture or be more present with your loved ones and those that you care for your family, your kids. Um, there's almost this, there's almost this energy about, there's this energy that has to do with the female energy. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with issues that have to do with your mother figure. Um, for others of you, it could be whatever you consider your mother figure uh, or whoever you consider your mother figure. It doesn't have to be your mother. It could be your grandmother if they raised you. There's something that you're going to be dealing with this month. For some of you guys, I know that, um, you know, in, in the early days of November, we celebrate, as an example, Dia de los Muertos, which is um, Day of the Dead. So for some of you guys, you guys are honoring your ancestors. For others of you, you're honoring um, your loved ones or your past loved ones. Um, but there is something about a mother figure that is being highlighted here. Especially those of you guys that have a mother that has already ascended or that has passed on or a great grandmother, not a grandmother, but a great grandmother. It's a general reading, so it could be a grandmother, but they did say great grandmother. Um, I feel like they're coming around or you're going to be experiencing dreams about them. Know that they are not dreams. They are actually visiting you. So there is spiritual connection that's happening for a lot of you guys in this month and going into November. There's something about honoring a mother figure. It's going to connect with all of you guys differently. Your next card here is the two of swords. So the two of swords is again, okay. So what I'm getting is your intuition is going to be heightened cancer. And I feel like if you guys have had a mother figure or a great grandmother that has passed on, um, they're going to be visiting you or they're going to be coming around you. You're going to be getting symbols or signals um, about them being around if you've been feeling like your loved one is around you and you're questioning or you're wondering, but you're also in doubt, know that you need to learn to pay more attention to your intuition. Two of Swords indicates that you're not giving yourself the space or the time to get your to get your thoughts in order or to be able to tap into that intuition. So there's a very important message here that's coming through in regards to mother figure. Um what I'm getting is, as an example, um, when we experienced the death in the family, um, one of my relatives was extremely heartbroken, uh, going, it, it was very difficult for them, uh, the mourning process, and they wouldn't dream about that, that, you know, family member that passed on, it was really difficult, and they felt like we would constantly talk about us dreaming about her, and it was painful for her because she couldn't understand why she was so close and really wasn't being able to connect. Um, the reason for it is because when that happens, they are aware of our pain. They are aware that we're going through it. And the least they want to do is hurt or, you know, the least they want to do is pick at that cut, right? They don't want to hurt you. So if they feel like you're not ready, they won't come around you until you're ready, until you're ready to accept what is and to embrace. Then they're able to step in and communicate. So that's kind of the energy that I'm sensing for some of you guys with a mother figure or a great grandmother. Um, but you're definitely going to be getting symbols, signs, uh, or dreams of them coming around you. Now, your next card here is the Eight of Pentacles. If you guys have been trying really hard to manifest stability or financial stability. I feel like doors are going to start to open up for you guys with this eclipse. Um, if you've been working on something very hard and it hasn't had a lot of momentum, as an example, if you're in the process of getting a house or if you've been in the process of, <clears throat> if, you've been in the process of 
if you've been in the process of um, getting a bank loan or, or something that's going to help you elevate yourself, um, there's been delays, that's no longer going to be the issue. So I feel like with this eclipse, what's going to happen is wherever you were experiencing blockages, those blockages are going to be removed. The eclipse is coming and highlighting something. So for some of you guys, it could mean that if, as an example, like I said, if you've been waiting or in the process of getting a house and it just hasn't came through, the bank is finally going to reach out to you and tell you, Hey, um, we have this paper that's missing cancer and we need it in order to get, to get the ball rolling. Or for others of you have been trying to get a bank, um, a bank loan or anything that's going to help you elevate yourself or uh, make way for more endeavors or to bring more structure into your life. All of those obstacles are going to be removed. I feel like you're coming to the realization or it will come to the light. What is it that you need to do to get you from point A to point B? All right, Cancer. All right, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What changes can you expect with this eclipse? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What changes are coming to Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? What changes can we expect with this eclipse? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys liked these videos, like sharing, comment. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. All right, here we go, Leo. All right, your first card here is the Nine of Swords. Worries, stress, um, responsibilities, really. I feel like for some of you guys, you've been experiencing a bit of pushback. Things haven't been that easy for you guys, or uh, it's been a bit of a challenging situation. But I feel for a lot of you guys, that's quickly going to be changing. Exactly what I just said. We have the Emperor card here. Okay, I'm getting certain messages, but let me pull out the third card for you guys. Yeah, the Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so what I got initially with the Nine of Swords is stress, worries for some of you guys, debts um, that you've been either struggling or having difficulty uh, being able to balance. Now with the Emperor card here, this is indicating to me that finally stability or structure starts to come through for you guys. Um, also, a lot of opportunities that are going to be coming your way to make money. This doesn't have to be where you work out. For some of you guys, I'm getting getting an offer. For others of you guys, you're jumping to a different career or a different position. So what I initially got when I seen the emperor was whatever it is that you've been struggling or having difficulty with, Leo, that's quickly going to be changing. This eclipse, think of it as like a sledgehammer that's coming through and it's knocking down the walls that have prevented you from moving forward. That's exactly what I seen when I seen the emperor. Um, so again, you know, when you go to a construction site and they're knocking down a, a wall, you see the big ass ball. I forget what that's called, but that's exactly what they showed me. So it's coming quick, it's coming fast and it's coming strong. So I feel like with this eclipse, you're taking it to the next level. Even if you felt like things were not moving as quickly as you would want, or things were moving in a positive way for you, the way you would hope, that's no longer going to be an issue. Whatever resistance you've been experiencing, it's almost like an overwhelming feel or an overwhelming energy of flow, flow of financial abundance or financial stability for a lot of you guys, especially with this Ace of Pentacles and the Emperor right next to it. So this is money coming in. This is your finances starting to boom. This is getting a handle on responsibilities or debts that you've been experiencing uh, or perhaps we're dealing with the past month or so um, and taking it to the next level for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that work in sales or anything like that. I see major bonuses coming through for you guys. For others of you, money that is unexpected will be unfolding for you guys. So a lot of financial stability coming through for you, Leos. All right, moving on here. All right, let's see what's going on with Virgo. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is this eclipse bringing to Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for 
this eclipse, what can they expect? What changes are coming to them? Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, Virgo, we have the Sun card. So there is joy for some of you guys. Uh, you're going to be hearing about some type of pregnancy or some type of birth that is going to be either within the family. For some of you guys, this could be you. So if you guys are not trying to get pregnant, take care of yourselves um, because it's unexpected. Um, there is, there is a blessing that's coming through for some of you guys. And I feel like it has, or is in connection with the birth of a child. For some of you guys, you're being asked to be the godmother or the godfather of a child. Yeah, I'm seeing children. So for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that have no children, like I said, if you're not trying to get pregnant, be careful because it may come as a surprise to you guys. Your next card here is the Four of Swords. So the Four of Swords indicating retrospect, um, being able to take things, uh, perhaps rest for some of you guys. For others of you, you could have recently had some type. For some of you guys, you probably recently gave birth. If you did, it is very important, very crucial to take very good care of yourself, especially those of you guys that had a C-section or went through some type of C-section or some type of surgery. Um, even if it's not pregnancy, but you recently had a surgery, make sure to upkeep yourself, uh, make sure to take care that you're getting your rest, that you're not overdoing or doing things that you're not supposed to be doing because if you don't take care of it, it can actually, you can actually go back. So again, if there, for those of you guys that recently had some type of surgery, make sure that you're um, checking yourself that you're going to your doctor's appointments, et cetera. You don't want to have something worsen. Um, because what I'm seeing is for some of you guys, like I said, those of you guys that recently had some type of surgery, some type of infection, and it comes at because you weren't upkeeping or you weren't doing what you were supposed to do to make sure that you were getting your rest or the restrictions that your doctor basically gave you. So again, be mindful of that. Your next card here is the page of cups. Okay. So for those of you Virgos out there that have been single for quite a while, the sun card, the four of swords and the page of cups, you're finding, you're finding a partner or a romantic partner that's coming into your life. But I feel like for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that have had difficulty finding a healthy, loving relationship, they're highlighting here, learning to love to be alone, like to learn to love your own company. Only through this are you going to be able to attract a like-minded person, someone that has the same intentions and the same motives as you when it comes to dating. Um, if there is a habit here of constantly having casual connections, don't allow yourself to go down that same path because at this point, Virgo, I'm going to be honest, at this point, what they're saying is you're not looking for anything casual for some of you guys. I mean, it is a general reading, but the message that's coming through is you're not looking for anything casual. So stop entertaining what is casual, right? So again, if you have a habit that you cannot contain yourself from being single for too long, um, because then they start looking like a snack. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself. Okay. Be mindful that if you take it to be casual, it will be casual. Um, and I feel like I don't need to tell Virgos this, but for some reason that's, what's coming through. Stop trying to make hubby or wifey material, people that are only seasonal or temporary. All right. Learn to put that effort and energy on yourself, on treating yourself, take yourself out to the movies, do stuff for yourself. When you start to love your own company, you'll be able to better bring to you people that are like minded, people that have the same intentions or the same desires as you, as well as seeing 
through actions, through actions, that they mean what they say, Virgo. All right, and Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What can they expect? What can they expect for this coming eclipse? What changes are coming to them? Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What changes are coming to them? All right, we have the Page of Wands. So there is communication that is going to be opening up for a lot of you Libras. If you've been waiting or hoping to hear from someone, they are definitely reaching out this month or the beginning of next month, but they are definitely on their way to communicating with you. Now, the next card here is the Six of Cups. Again, I feel like you guys have been, for some of you, you've been hoping or wanting to hear from someone from the past. They are definitely coming back around. I feel like this eclipse is giving you the opportunity of getting it right, Libra. So whatever it is that, as an example, if you had an amazing connection with someone and things were going great and for some reason it just didn't work out or you guys kind of fell off or no longer continued or pursued the relationship, I feel like this eclipse is bringing to you an opportunity to realize where you effed up or where they effed up and learning from that to make you a better lover, a better partner, and vice versa on their side as well. That's definitely being highlighted for some of you guys. And the High Priestess, again, I feel like you guys are going to be experiencing a lot of spiritual connections, Libra. Um, I feel like if you are connecting with the scenario that I just mentioned, if there was some type of connection or some type of relationship that didn't pan out, I feel like with this eclipse, there are things that are still undone. Um, and I feel like that person is coming back around to connect with you, to communicate with you. Um, we're talking on the higher end level of energy, okay? Not to be misconstrued. If you were dating a cheater, we're not talking about that. We're talking about a person that there was a genuine, authentic love, respect, and connection. But for some reason, it, it's almost like life took you guys on two different paths. I feel like you guys are coming back around and being able to, basically, they're giving you the green light. And there is promise to be able to pursue this connection, to continue or to pick up where things left off. Again, like I said, this is on a higher level type of energy. We're not talking about low vibration partners. Now, for others of you, I do see new love coming your way. And I feel like this uh, connection or this person that's coming through for a lot of you guys, you will either meet them through friends or family members that introduce you to this person. And it's no one that you're currently dealing with, Libra. There is almost this. I'm going to be honest, Libras, this is the end of this year and the beginning of next year. You guys are going to be on a whole different level when it comes to dating, when it comes to relationships. I see you guys dating or dealing with people that are much more mature or for some of you guys emotionally mature that they know exactly what they want. So if you've been dealing with people that, you know, they're hot and cold or they string you along or they do nothing but promises that's going to be changing. I feel like you guys are going to be surprised at the type of people that you start to attract. And I feel like it has a lot to do with self-work. So if you guys have been on the journey of self-love and, you know, putting yourself first and making yourself a priority and knowing your worth, you're definitely going to be seeing the results of that hard labor. As I feel like next year for a lot of you guys, you're having soulmate connections. You guys are experiencing uh, deep emotional connections and higher elevated uh, type of relationships. All right, my lovelies. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. If you did like, share, subscribe to our channel, and I will see you guys soon. Happy Hallow's Eve to all of you guys, and we'll see each other soon. Till then, bye.